Portfolio Builder members, this has been the most profitable week in our track record. I just want to show you the account value from last Friday till today. So if we go back to last Friday, we were sitting at a $32,000 profit. By Monday, it hit $32,883. By this morning, it climbed to $36,725. And at the close today, it is sitting at $40,737. Right after volatility events, that's when we really clean up. That's when it's very easy to make money selling options and also enjoy upside potential on the underlying asset. Now, that's based on a half a million dollar portfolio. Our diamond level program can trade with 150K. And in this example, you can see we've had a even larger profit. So from the previous trailer, which was just yesterday, Tuesday, we were sitting on a $16,637 profit or a 10% return overall. And as of the close today, we've jumped to $19,683 with an 11.6% return. So a 1.6% jump in a single day in the diamond level membership. Now they're very similar. This one buys the SPY. You can do it with as little as $30,000. It's safer, it makes less, but it loses less in sharp downturns. And so while we can protect most, if not all of the downside risk in the basic program, in order to get a higher return, we take a little more risk in the Diamond Club. But when you look at the underlying assets in the Diamond Club, you're gonna buy Microsoft, Apple, Facebook, Intel, Cisco, Comcast, Bank of America, and Wells Fargo. And so I would argue that this portfolio in the long run is actually safer than the SPY, although it may have more volatility in the short run. And that's because these are the leaders of the S&P 500. When you buy the SPY, a lot of that cash automatically flows straight to buying these eight stocks. So now we can aim our strike price at a specific level per security. We can collect the dividends on each of these securities. And because the underlying asset has more volatility than the SPY, you get a higher yield on the covered call. So it does make sense if you have 150K to play it smarter by switching to the diamond strategy. And our whale club does require 300,000 to follow, but probably closer to 220 to 250 because it will purchase Amazon and Google exclusively during a pullback and they're already pulling back so the time to pounce on that opportunity is coming up right now the whale program just got out of the TLT we called it quits at 126 that's hit a high of like 132 it may jump to 145 we're trying to catch a final capitulation in the bond market uh, to get another shock to the upside but really we're looking for a shock to the downside on the TLT. So we're using a very leveraged cheap options in the whale club to hit some very big returns with a tiny part of our portfolio. So anybody can follow those trades right now. It'll only be for the folks who have at least enough capital to buy 100 shares of Amazon and 100 shares of Google when I give the buy order uh, that will be able to follow those covered call tr tr trades. So that'll be in a rare time, we know Amazon and Google are not going to disappear. So when they are extremely sold off, when the market's panicking, that's when we want to buy those companies and sell those deep in the money covered calls. So we'll take a look at how close we are to making that signal. And so what I'd like to do now is cover the news and as to how it relates to our various portfolios. So currently we are in a very aggressive trade on the SPY where we have create another $2 of profit per share today. We had $2 of profit from Monday through Wednesday, and that is abnormally high. We were predicting a sharp rebound after the Fed announcement and after seeing uh, basically Wall Street start to slowly but surely push their buy order for the SPY uh, up, up, up. So here's a look at the Shanghai, still sold off over the past several days. Uh, and this is unlike the rest of the market. The rest of the market is going up. 
We're keeping a close eye on the exchange rate for the dollar versus the Chinese yuan. China warned its citizens, this is from Bloomberg, citizens against U.S. travel citing frequent shootings. Asia equities are looking up after U.S. stocks jumped the most since January. China issued a travel advisory about dangers of visiting the U.S. citing frequent shootings, robbery, and theft. Jerome Powell opened the door to a rate cut. The Fed chief said the central bank is closely monitoring the impact of U.S. trade tensions. And so I do think this will escalate and that there could be uh, exactly what everybody's predicting. Huge rate cuts, another push to the bond market before it finally tanks. Uh, so that's what we're carefully looking out for and why today's trade alert said dead cat bounce. Although we're bullish in our trades in the diamond and basic club this week and next week, most likely we'll get extremely defensive uh, as soon as we've captured all these easy profits in the in the in what they call the dead cat bounce. China's PMI continuing to crash. They are finding Ford. China macro surprise index continues to have negative surprises. All of the Fed folks have been hinting that they're ready to drop rates. Meanwhile, we're following Deutsche Bank related to the ECB. Uh, they are on the verge of bankruptcy, and that would certainly be a systematic risk to the world, to the banking system, to the stock market. Uh, world growth has been trimmed down by 0.3% as the IMF is seeing everywhere slow down. And so Mark Cudmore of Bloomberg is pointing out that China is now 60% of our GDP and that they are growing faster than us at 6%. However, if you do look at the big picture, China's growth was double that so it had this ex extreme GDP growth, went and made a ton of loans to all the countries around it. It has some $40 trillion of debt, and now their growth is, is just crashing extremely quickly. So to think that they will maintain the 6% GDP is misleading. And so I do think that China will be hurt far worse than the U.S. in this trade war. So at some point, I do think they will have to belly over and make some agreement. But it does appear that they are going to make it sting for America before that happens. So this is tough with the election coming up in 2020. So is Trump trying to create a stock crash so that the Fed will drop rates? China comes into a deal and then the market goes back into new highs quickly? We'll see. And this article is pointing out that China now has 1.4 billion people. They've stolen a ton of technology, so they're pretty self-reliant. And their GDP growth over the last uh, three decades has been insane. Um, but it's slowing down. It's not, it doesn't mean they're going to disappear, but uh, I think they're going to have a credit explosion on their hands uh, as we rank up the pressure on them. 2% gain on the S&P 500, unheard of. We caught some of it, not all of it. But more importantly, we had the downside protection. The 5% tariff on Mexico, many are thinking this may not happen or at least not make it to the 10, 15, 20% range. Uh, the 5% quite likely will as we're coming up on that first date. The threat of not having access to rare earth minerals is something of concern with China. Uh, and also why we have a hedge on Apple in our diamond portfolio, not because we just want to hedge Apple. We're trying to hedge the entire portfolio with the put options on Apple because we're already attacking their telecommunication giant Huawei in a very detrimental way. Phones are finally taking up more time than the TV. Here is the Bloomberg dollar index. A little sell off in the dollar after the Fed said they will potentially lower rates, weakening the dollar. 
That makes life easier for U.S. exporters. It also makes life far easier for anyone trying to run an emerging market economy, especially if they owe America a lot of money denominated in dollars. Here's a note that Trump has been fighting for freedom of the press as part of a trade deal with China. Washington had asked Beijing to completely open its internet as part of the trade deal. Yeah, right. They've banned Google, Facebook, Instagram, Wikipedia. They absolutely do not want freedom of speech in communist China, nor do they want to let us run our own companies there, compete, or anything of that nature. So this could get very ugly. China's top economic planner said more private companies are encouraged to enter into debt-to-equity swaps. Essentially, the communist government is buying up all the bad companies for equity. So we're seeing some of their banks getting into some serious problems now. And this is what happens when you have centralized planning and uh, you just give everybody all the money they want and hope they do a good job with no real risk. When the credit cycle turns, UBS's Matt Mish estimates peak losses in the U.S. leveraged loans, 7%, high yield 7.5, approximately $455 billion, or 2.2% of U.S. GDP. So we're playing that with the LQD ETF in the Whale Club. And again, these options could be traded with any size portfolio. Keep them small. This is betting that the LQD ETF will tank with put options in our whale club trades. And that's essentially betting this, what this is talking about, that the BBB rated loans in the bond market are going to get rated lower. And when that happens, half of LQD's holdings will now no longer qualify. So they'll have to dump those bonds, the rates will spike, and the value of LQD would uh, presumably go down. China is expected to see corporate bond defaults hit new record high in 2019 due to rising refinancing pressure and government's higher tolerance for defaults. Samsung Electronics said on Wednesday it plans to cut production at the Chinese plant. The ADP report had a downswing to only 27,000 new jobs. I think the expected was around 150. This could just be very short term. We will see, though, uh, because this has been one of the stronger data points for America this year. Uh, World Bank lowering the forecast for GDP growth worldwide from 2.9 to 2.6. Uh, again, this is talking about the government in China taking over the bad debt. Here's a look at that. ADP employment change. It's been very strong for a decade, uh, but that is a pretty sharp little pullback there. But we have seen the rhetoric in the trade war slow down, so maybe confidence will bounce back up. That is until we raise tariffs on the remaining $300 billion in goods, breakdown of where the economy was growing and subtracting um, mainly in the health services. Hong Kong's new orders show steepest contraction in three years, led by falling business to China. PMI down to 46.9. Anything under 50 means you're slowing down. 75 basis points of rate cuts are already priced into the Fed by the end of 2019. So we've got to wonder if the TLT would even budge if they did start to lower these rates or if it would only be from a real scare from a stock market crash. So right now the rates are close to the inflation goal or lower. So it makes almost no sense to buy those unless you're trying to flip them for a quick buck. Uh, so far the tariffs related to Mexico, the rhetoric has remained uh, pretty calm so far and markets are jumping up on that. Stocks soar on the worst private jobs print in nine years, although that may, might be short term. Something has this something that hasn't happened before. The share of BB rated debt in the US corporate bond market has eclipsed the proportional of the AAA. So this is exactly what we're talking about uh, with the LQD ETF. If you buy put options, our whale club gives you the exact stri strike, expiration, and strategy for what percentage of your portfolio should buy that. But we do believe 
uh, based on analysis from Jeffrey Gunlack, the bond king, that the triple B sector of the investment grade bond market is misvalued, misrated, and that it will be re-rated lower. And when that happens, that's our opportunity to catch a drop in the ETF LQD by using put options. And again, our whale club, those particular trades you can follow with uh, any amount of capital. It's only when we do buy up Google and Amazon during a serious systematic market crash that you'll want to have 100 shares of each of those and need a little bit larger portfolio to follow. Poor CNN and Matto ratings have just been in free fall, which is just good to have confidence that the president will continue to be the president and not have to worry about that on the economic side for our portfolio. The street still expects pretty big Q4 earnings bounce. So trade wars escalate. Surely everybody's going to start revising down. That's when you'll get the serious crash. Go figure. Uh, Apple CEO Cook does not think that China will target them and says they have not yet. David Rosenberg, maybe Trump is a genius. After all, what if he finally gets the steep Fed rate cuts he's been demanding? After that, he ends the trade wars, tariffs go to zero, and the stock market surges to new highs just in time for the 2020 election. So if that happens, uh, TLT will crash. So everybody trying to push those bonds up higher, chase the last centimeter of potential profits may take a big hit. Now I know Drunken Miller is now completely out of stocks. He's betting big that we do get one more big push down in stocks and another flood into the TLT. And so of course I'm carefully watching out for that and uh, trading to that demise as a backup plan, which means we have the proper hedges set up to protect us uh, and play our trades relatively defensively. Schiff was uh, a pretty cool YouTuber. The end result is always to buy gold and nothing but gold. I guess he likes emerging markets too. Uh, but he's a character. He does a podcast that hits YouTube maybe every two to three times a week. And so he has uh, been predicting that we'll have massive inflation, stagflation, and that the bond market, stock market will all crash. And of course, the only thing left will be gold. Gold's at a near high, so be careful there. The three-month moving average of global semiconductor sales fell 24% in April, so we are seeing the uh, the slowly growing effects of the trade war slowing down everything. Uh, this is comparing the PE ratio of Chinese companies against American companies, but it's no comparison. Uh, one is a capitalist society with real rules and laws that protect investors. The other is a communist society that's closed, uh, shady, and you know half the companies are just stealing technology around the world and then selling them uh, in the East. Across the board, rivalry with China is becoming an organizing principle of U.S. economic, foreign, and security policies. This is the most important geopolitical development of our era, the looming 100-year U.S.-China conflict from Financial Times. And so certainly uh, this is not a one-week story, not a one-month story. This is a decade-plus story that we will be dealing with. There will be ups, there will be downs. Think about the Cold War, except your enemy is three times stronger, if not more. Beige Book is a report put out eight times a year by the Fed uh, where they interview lots of people, business owners. And so uh, some of the highlights have been screenshotted in this uh, video update. If the Taiwanese dollar were to strengthen, it could trigger losses far beyond the measly coupon payments that are collected on the bonds, forcing the countries. So this is a risk for the bond market. Uh, we have a look at the price on that. No big movement yet. Uh, agriculture producers in southern New Mexico expressed concern over the lack of labor force growth and the strain that immigration restrictions have imposed on their current workforce. 
Restaurants in Charleston closed because they couldn't find enough staff. One restaurant moved counter services and disposable utensils in order to remain open with a smaller staff. A number of businesses in New York State have noted ongoing challenges with the recent minimum wage increase. Firms generally reported input costs increase in the moderate to moderate range. Translation, U.S. consumers are not paying for the trade war yet. And this is because on China's side, they've been devaluing the currency, lowering prices so that the tariffs paid aren't offsetting the cost yet. One Boston contact said they added a surcharge to cover the tariff on goods from China, which customers accepted. Once they found an alternative supplier, they removed the surcharge. So we know that Vietnam is currently the biggest benefactor of this. The talks with Mexico are making progress. In general, economy grows modestly with slight improvement. So. No ammo for the Fed there to lower rates. Uh, of course, they're more interested in the stock market and trade war. Oil is getting hammered today, but rates aren't moving. Usually the bonds are looking at uh, the oil market as a leading indicator to help it predict the future price. S&P 500 is up 296 points this year. 143 of those came in two days, January 4th and June 4th when Powell spoke. And we sure did take advantage of the big move this week in our both of our programs. Based on what I know, more than one Chinese key departments are collecting experts' opinion on further countermeasures against U.S. suppression. Plus, new measure is likely on its way. So that's all we need for this bounce to have a pullback. Um, Bitcoin, our portfolio is up around 75%. We're going to be issuing a new sheet out to our... Uh, crypto customers in the near future. The trade alert is going to be to sell all your altcoins and consolidate into only owning Bitcoin, Ethereum, Bitcoin Cash, and Litecoin. And from there, we will tell you when to take half of your coins off the table into cash, and then when to go into a full cash, taking all the profits off the table. Uh, we're up big in this portfolio. And I think as long as the Chinese-U.S. trade war is escalating and the risk of the Chinese currency to further devalue uh, is your main, your main bullish catalyst for cryptocurrencies. So that's still on the table. We have seen a bit of a pullback. We haven't told anyone to make any actions yet. Hold on to your, your seats because we do feel like there's more trouble ahead before this is resolved. So perhaps there's one last big pop in the cryptocurrency market. That's when we'll tell you to consolidate down to the top four, then switch to half cash, half crypto, and finally to get completely out and wait for a crash. Uh, Russia and China are now ready to trade outside of the dollar when it comes to buying oil. And so that's not a ton of money, but it's starting the procedure to end the hegemony of the dollar, uh, which is why the U.S. can borrow so much money. And with oil prices collapsing and inventories growing, there is surely a lot of trouble ahead without a resolution in the trade war. And we're just one tweet away from the next huge sell-off and it's just insane how the market is happy to buy it back when there's no bad news here's a look at oil crashing 22 percent s p 500 decoupling from the pattern of oil we have the bond market shouting out a crash china is adding great stimulus to its economy while at the same time keeping interest rates low our federal reserve has incessantly lifted interest rates, even though inflation is very low and instituted a very big dose of quantitative tightening. We have the potential to go up like a rocket if we did some lowering of rates, like one point, and some quantitative easing. Yes, we are doing very well at 3.2% GDP, but with our wonderfully low inflation, we could be setting major records and at the same time make our national debt look so small. 
And so we will see how this all plays out. It looks like he's trying to crash the stock market, get the rates lower, start up QE, pull off the tariffs, and let the market fly going into the election. So we'll see what kind of game of chicken these two countries really want to play this summer and into the close of the year. They'll have to come to a resolution at some point early next year to have time for a rebound. Okay, let's take a look at some charts. Here's another look at crude oil. Not as bad as the 2018 crash, but there's no signs of relief yet. Lumber has a little bounce, but not looking hot. Gold uh, has neared its five-year high, so without a major devaluation in the Chinese currency, I would suspect this is stuck, but chances of the Chinese having to devalue further are pretty high, and you can see uh, the price is just skyrocketing over the last several weeks. But there is a strong ceiling of sellers at that level who were collecting gold much cheaper. Here's that Taiwanese dollar uh, trading pretty flat, although it's pretty cheap conversion rate, so it wouldn't take much of a change of price. Here's the conversion on the Chinese currency. A lot of people have drawn the line in the sand at seven, so we're flirting with that. Here's the government bonds continuing to drift lower and lower, 30 year at two and a half. So if the uh, Fed is successful in overshooting inflation at two, why would you buy at two and a half to make half a percent or less per year for 30 years? No, definitely not. People are buying the bonds to try to flip them for a quick profit playing the trade war fear. And so if that doesn't play out or when everybody starts to sell, Look for a spike in yields and a crash in the TLT. That's why we're playing that in our whale program. Bond market is just terrific. Uh, negative rates around the world. Less than inflation at Hong Kong. Uh, UK as well. Here's a look at the SPY. Five day, three month, five year. So while it feels like the sell-off is over, you can look and just see there is plenty of room to go. If we get uh, increased rhetoric in the trade war and deteriorating uh, profits from the corporations, which is happening, this is alarming. We're seeing the sell-off in emerging markets now. And so they've been a little bit of a leading indicator for us. As they are a smaller market with less money flowing through it, so easily easier to be manipulated uh, but in general, it does look like it's recovering. Uh, FXI is the large cap Chinese ETF, picking up some uh, some steam here, slowing down the sell off. Lyft uh, is one of the IPO companies we track, not because we're trying to trade it, but if we see the IPO companies doing poorly, that's another canary in the coal mine that will give us a heads up for our more secure positions. High yield portfolio was alerted to just buy the positions this week and no covered call. So we are realizing some huge gains today. Look at Apple, Bank of America. These are, by the way, the leading companies that are held in this SPY ETF. So it's very similar, just a smarter way to do it. If you buy the top companies the SPY buys for you, you get better yields on the covered call and bigger dividends. And this allows us to also aim our strike price differently for each security instead of one blanket strike price when we trade the SPY. Facebook, Microsoft, Wells Fargo, trade war stocks, mixed bag today, uh, nothing alarming there. TLT pushing higher and higher. It's getting near the 2015-2016 high. And so we're going to play it in both directions on the whale with tiny, tiny amounts of capital and leveraged call options and put options. So on the LQD ETF, I think the top may be in. So we're just looking for a sell-off 
uh, on the LQD. With those trades on the TLT, we will play a short-term move pushing higher and a long-term move crash. And so I think if the trade war suddenly ends, TLT has some serious selling off to do. Um, but at the same end, if TLT does push higher, it'll most likely be because the SPY is tanking. And then uh, as soon as that hits a bottom, that's when the TLT would start to revert as well. So however you shape it, TLT has a volatile road ahead. Here's LQD ETF. This one gives us the ability to short that BBB rated bond. Deutsche Bank, if this gets below six, a lot of analysts say it could spell big trouble for the total market and bankruptcy for this big bank. Google, again, is the company we want to buy in a systematic sell-off. Good thing that they're already having a sell-off outside of the general market because of uh, the government starting to look at antitrust laws related to them having a monopoly. And again, we're going to want to buy this during a panic and start selling deep in the money covered calls. It will be a very lucrative period of time. And this is what we do in our whale club on Thursdays, Amazon, uh, also in the same boat. Uh, this 1300 to 1400 level is where I'm looking at to buy Amazon and Google uh, closer to this, this level that it was previously at. Uh, but also I'm looking at timing related to the trade war. And once we've seen the S&P 500 fall enough and the VIX spike around 30, that will more likely be the indicator that will say, okay, let's take the risk. Let's buy Amazon and Google 100 shares each and start selling deep in the money covered calls so we can make a huge profit in three directions. Up, we don't care about. Flat, we're fine. And we're going to have a lot of downside protection. So if you're interested in upgrading, please call Dean 505-322-7515. Tomorrow is our Whale Club trade alert. And if you do upgrade to the basic product, you get 30 days free in the Whale program. The trade alert tomorrow will be something that every investor can afford to do because it's just cheap put options and call options that will be long gone playing the bond market. And so uh, again, we'll be playing the TLT and the LQD while we patiently wait for a mega sell-off to buy up Google and Amazon in our Whale Club membership. So that trade alert comes out tomorrow. Basic program is Monday, Wednesday, Friday, although it will issue emergency alerts if there is any risk at all. And then our diamond level membership trades on Tuesdays. So thanks again for your time. Uh, look for another trade alert tomorrow. If you're one of our basic members who's active and paid, you don't get this during the free trial. Otherwise, you'll get an update tomorrow evening. Thanks again.